I hope you've all had a enjoyable small group sessions in the in the various breakout rooms. Welcome back to the lecture theatre for the next lecture. Many of us are from the generation where our first mobile phone was a Nokia. Some of us, or I think many of us, I suspect, probably use Linux a lot. And I think that uh, most of us will be acquainted with Angry Birds, if not as a game we play, or at least we know of its existence. And all these products, companies, brands came from a country that in population is somewhat of the same order of magnitude as Singapore. Uh, although considerably larger in land area. I'm referring, of course, to Finland. And it's my pleasure this evening to introduce Dr. Juha Ila Yaskin. I hope I've got that sort of right. Uh, President and CEO of the Technology Academy of Finland, TAF, which is the organization that has played a major role in helping to make Finland the very innovative nation that it is today. The TF is a body of education providers, industry councils that work together to promote technology and innovation in Finland. It is a joint effort between the Finnish Academy of Technology, the Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences in Finland, and the Industry Council, which represents Finnish companies. More to the point, and pertinent to the Global Young Scientists Summit, the TEF is best known, is well known, for bringing to us the Millennium Technology Prize. Now, you have several Millennium Technology Prizes uh, amongst you in this summit sharing their inspiration with you. The Millennium Technology Prize rewards researchers for bringing their ideas and concepts to life. It's an annual prize. It awards a million euros to innovators who have helped to enhance the quality of people's lives in a sustainable way. And these innovations deliver extensive change now and in the future. As I said just now, at this GISS, we have two Millennium Technology Prize winners, uh, Professor uh, Gretzel, who I thought I saw somewhere in the audience, and, uh, oh, there he is, sitting in front, and uh, Professor Stuart Parkin, and uh, I'm sure they will also be able to share with you, uh, or some, they will have, they'll be sharing with you at some point this week, uh, their work. I will not go into the details of Yuha's background, you can find out more about him uh, in his uh, on the GYSS website, and I would uh, like now to invite him to address us. But before I do that, uh, we're going to play a short video of the work of the TAF, and then uh, you have come and share his insights with us. So, can we have the video, please? Thank you. The humankind has always strived for a better life and for a better world. It is the ultimate quest for every generation, and it is why Technology Academy Finland established the Millennium Technology Prize in 2002. The prize is awarded every two years to scientists whose innovations make life better for everyone living on this planet. What makes life better? Learning. Because without learning, there is no knowledge. And without knowledge, there is nothing. No equality, no future, no hope for a better life. Now education can be enjoyed in the remote villages of India. A little boy in Andhra Pradesh can share the same knowledge as his peers in London, New York, or Helsinki. Thanks to the World Wide Web and the Linux open source operating system, pioneering innovations by Tim Berners-Lee and Linus Torvalds, Learning no longer has boundaries, and truly global information sharing is a reality in every corner of our world. What makes life better? A clean environment, 
Taking better care of the earth and its resources is not only right, it is imperative. There's no way around it. We need a major turnaround in both our energy consumption and in our dependence on fossil-based energy. Now it's possible to generate electricity from a source that never dries out, the sun, with zero emissions, and to turn on the lights without using much energy. Thanks to the efficiency and environmental performance of the third generation dye synthesized solar cell and blue LEDs, groundbreaking innovations by Michael Gretzel and Shuji Nakamura, energizing our lives is cleaner than ever before. What makes life better? Hell. Finding cures to the worst diseases is one of the mankind's biggest challenges. The ethical stem cell research by Shinya Yamanaka has opened completely new opportunities. And already today, over 100 million people a year receive treatment using the advanced drug delivery systems developed by Robert Langer. Technological innovation has always been a powerful engine and a driving force advancing the development of societies and improving the quality of life. As the world and the humankind now face bigger and more complex challenges than ever before, we look towards technological innovation for answers. We rely on the ingenuity, skill and dedication of scientists who have made it their mission to solve problems and to make life better for all of us. The Millennium Technology Prize was established to recognize and celebrate that very special breed of people, the innovators. So, first of all, thank you very much for the kind introduction, and thank you very much for GYSS inviting me here to address this very prestigious conference. In the GYSS logo, it says One North. I bring you, bring you greetings from 60 North. That's the latitude where Helsinki is situated. And Finland is, is located between the 60th and the 70th latitude, which means that the northernmost peak of Finland received their first sunrise since about uh, two months, just three days ago. On the other hand, uh, sort of towards uh, the end of May, uh, they will have the last sunset since more than two months. The next sunset will come at the end of uh, July. So we live in a hard environment in Finland. Uh, maybe that's the reason why we are so addicted to uh, technology. Uh, in fact, if you look at the world's population, <coughs> um, as was pointed out in the, in the introduction, Finland has about five, five and a half million uh, inhabitants. Uh, worldwide, there are, this is about one third of the population that lives above the 60th latitude. Yeah, Finland has a tradition in, uh, in, in technology. Uh, Finland is not an old country, actually. This year we are celebrating our 100th anniversary of independence uh, from the Russian dominance. Uh, but uh, even before becoming independent, uh, Finland applied technology uh, very soon after the invention. Uh, as examples, electricity and phones, and maybe that was the reason why we also applied mobile telephony very early. And it gave a, a good boost to some of our companies in, uh, in, in, that, uh, in that area. Right, but let's get to the topic of, uh, uh, of the Millennium Technology Prize. You actually saw an abstract of, of my, uh, my talk before, so I could, in fact, stop here. But let's deepen a little bit on what was, what was uh, told in the video. Uh, in that first slide, you will see, uh, see a kind of a symbol uh, of our prize. It's a piece of art uh, designed by a Finnish uh, sculptor, Helena Hietanen. Uh, besides Finnish art, it also uh, involves Finnish technology because the basis for that sculpture is a silicon single crystal which is manufactured by a Finnish company called Okmetic Corporation. So what is the Millennium Technology Prize? In short, it's a prize for an innovation that improves the quality of our lives. 
and to uh, get a little bit deeper there, we are in the first instance giving the prize to a particular innovation, a technological innovation that we think improves the quality of our lives. So technology and innovation must be there. Innovation meaning that it's not a prize to an invention or a discovery, but something which has been brought to the practice already. But we would also like to award the prize to innovations that still have a future development in front of them. So not something which is 100 years old and, uh, and there is nothing more happening, but, uh, but, uh, um, but that it has a uh, track record, but also potential for further, uh, further development. Innovation meaning that uh, we are also not giving the prize for a lifelong work of, uh, of a scientist, but uh, it is given to a certain particular innovation. So that's about what the prize stands for. And as was said in the introduction, it's a one million uh, euro cash uh, prize. Why did we, why did we make this, uh, this prize? Uh, because we want to recognize innovators and we felt sort of 16, 17 years ago in Finland that there was not a prize that actually recognized innovations and innovators. The other thing being of course that coming from a small distant country where we wanted to bring the word Finland to be known more uh, across, uh, across the world. And by the way, the prize is a global prize. So it's open uh, to citizens of all nations. And in short, my plea to you, to this audience is, please submit nominations to the prize. Everybody in this hall room is, uh, is entitled to make a nomination to the prize. We totally rely on having good nominations from all over the world uh, so that we can, uh, we can give the prize to a worthy, worthy candidate. So let me take a hand mic. <clears throat> so how does this work? We delivered the prize, we award the prize every two years. We started in 2004, and now we are heading towards uh, the next prize, which will be announced in, uh, in May 2018. We have a two-year cycle, and we actually we will open uh, the call for nominations in April this year close the nomination uh, in July, and th then we start our very rigorous um, selection process. Uh, we call experts to analyze all the, uh, all the nominations. Uh, we hand out uh, the nomination documents plus the analysis to a selection uh, committee. We also publish the names selection committee, so they are, in, in our case, they are known to everybody. Uh, the experts and the panels that we use outside the selection committee, them we keep secret. We also keep secret all the nominations except the winner, which we will announce. Not even our board will know uh, the nominations. The only person within Technology Academy Finland who knows all the nominations is myself plus the selection committee and the, and the panels that I use, who all, all work under an NDA that they will not uh, reveal the names. And all the names will remain secret for, uh, forever, except uh, the winner which will be announced. <coughs> the winner will be celebrated and announced in a very festive ceremony. This uh, picture shows the 2016 winner, Francis Arnold, together with the President of the Republic of Finland, who is always handing out, uh, out, out the prize to the winner. And 
And uh, <coughs> the way the prize is funded is a public-private partnership. Technology Academy Finland is a private foundation. We were founded in 2002 uh, solely to manage this, uh, this, uh, this prize under a different name. Our name at that time was the Millennium Technology Prize Foundation. Uh, the prize money, one million euro every two years, uh, is, uh, is donated by the government of Finland. So in this sense, it's a public-private partnership. And, uh, and the capital to our foundation has come from the Finnish industry and fin the Finnish industry association, so from private sources. Why we are called Technology Academy today uh, was actually came, became clear from the introduction. In 2008, we took two Finnish academies under our roof. Uh, the Finnish and the Swedish speaking Technology Academy. Altogether, they have about 700 members, 700 members who are invited to the academy based on their academic career merits. Why did they choose us? Why did they, uh, why did they come under our roof? Well, to tell you this, uh, a secret, uh, they wanted to join a long time. But there was a practical reason why they were unable to join. The Swedish-speaking academy is, is quite rich, and the Finnish-speaking academy is not. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's why a join, join was not possible. But now they live their own lives as independent academies, but we are kind of the, the face to the outside world for them. One way of uh, looking at, uh, at the prize, what it stands for, is certainly to, to look at, uh, at previous uh, winners. Like said before, we have two winners here. Uh, Michal Gretzel, who is uh, sitting in, uh, among the audience, who won the prize for uh, innovations on new materials uh, for solar, solar cells. Stuart Parkin, uh, I think uh, he will address uh, this conference a little later during the, during the week. His innovations were to dramatically increase computer mass memory storage capacity. Now, why is that important to our lives? I think, it's, uh, I think uh, in the case of Michal Kretzel, it's quite evident what, uh, what the significance is. But uh, actually, Stuart Parkin's innovations were key enablers uh, for a phenomena that we today call big data. It was also a key enabler uh, to all social media applications that, that everybody of us uh, uses today. Because all the social media applications, ne they need a huge amount of computer mass memory uh, to work uh, worldwide. Uh, our most recent winner, Francis Arnold, uh, the directed uh, evolution, uh, what, it, uh, what it means is, uh, is that uh, her innovations, they mimic natural evolution to create better proteins in the laboratory. And then these proteins can replace less efficient substances and sometimes even harmful technologies in many industrial processes. The range being almost infinite in, uh, in terms of uh, industry areas. Of course, when we go, uh, go back in history, First winner, Tim Berners-Lee, World Wide Web. I think that needs no explanation. And uh, Shuchi Nakamura, the blue and white uh, LED light, which uh, then later became a revolution in, in lighting technology, is, uh, are some examples of our, our previous winners. This also shows the selection of the previous winners that uh, we would like to award uh, the prize to a person who is still active and actively developing his or her uh, uh, innovation. This not being a discriminant in, uh, in, in age, because of course you can, you can do active work uh, a long time and in, in old age. But we want to make sure that, uh, that uh, the person is still uh, actively in, in research. And we, of course, we also want, uh, want to be sort of upfront in technology, recognizing technology 
which is not yet ripe, but which still has a lot of potential for the, for the future, like in many of, of these cases. Shuchi Nakamura's uh, invention uh, certainly being a good example, 2006, uh, it was by far not certain that LED would make it as a mainstream in, in lighting technology. So our selection committee is willing to take risks. It's willing to acknowledge technologies that, uh, that uh, we don't know yet how it, uh, how it comes about. So in terms of, uh, of time schedule, we are now in January 2017. We will open our next nomination period, period on the 3rd of April this year. Please stay tuned. Look into our webpage and send a nomination. Because, uh, as I said before, we are totally dependent on the nominations that are sent to us. We are not allowed uh, to select the winner on, uh, on persons or innovations that we would consider worth it. We must have a nomination. The nomination is open to all universities, research institutes, private companies, other organizations uh, being involved with, uh, with technological innovations. We accept peer nominations, so you don't have to go to the president of your university or a dean of your university to send a, uh, send a nomination. Anybody in this room uh, can send a qualified uh, nomination. All is done in electronic format. The only thing is, uh, two things that we need is a nomination letter describing uh, the innovation that, uh, that you want to nominate and describe the nominees, the persons that, uh, that you think are worth uh, giving the prize to. Uh, here, a word of uh, warning. Our selection committee is not allowed to change the nomination in any way. So if you propose a single person, then the selection committee must be convinced that it is exactly this single person that is worth the price. If they think that, that the innovation was due to a work of maybe one or two other people and they are not mentioned in your nomination, then that would disqualify your, your no nomination in the, uh, uh, from uh, being a, pa a possible price uh, recipient. So this is uh, maybe, uh, maybe one thing that to take, uh, take, take care of. We sometimes get multiple nominations. So somebody might, uh, might be thinking about the same innovation as, as you. That's not a problem. And uh, uh, we will just, uh, uh, just treat, them, uh, treat them side by side. How many nominations do we get? Uh, during the last round, we got uh, uh, 80, 80 uh, nominations, 80 innovations, which involved a total of 115 persons. So there were many nominations that included more than one person, more than one nomi nominee, typically two or three. I think in one case there was even, even four nominees. Now, you see from, uh, from our history that uh, we have always had single uh, winners. Uh, this may be a coincidence, or well, this may be due to the fact that previously the nominations were mostly single people, but we by no means are confined to, uh, to awarding the prize uh, to a single person. It can, be, it can be a team. So what happens after July? <coughs> like I said before, uh, we collect uh, we, uh, we collect uh, expert advice uh, to complement the nominations. We don't necessarily believe in, in what you have said in your nomination letter, but we want to have uh, independent uh, experts, usually two or three experts per nomination, which will be then handed to the, uh, to the International uh, Selection Committee. And it is finally our board, the Board of Technology Academy, uh, who then selects about the winner. Although, if the International Selection Committee proposes just one name, then it's more like a formality that, uh, that uh, this uh, uh, 
this innovation will be selected as the winner. On the other hand, if they have a split decision, then the final decision will be on our board. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me just conclude by a few other things, uh, explaining a few other things that Technology Academy Finland is doing, besides the Millennium uh, Technology Prize. We have taken into our agenda, especially to attract young people to the field of technology. We feel in, in Finland and in many European countries that uh, in the near future we will have a shortage of engineers. Not enough uh, talented young people choose the career of technology. And, uh, and many countries like Finland are totally reliant on, on companies uh, whose products are based on good technology. So what do we do? This is one example of on, a, on an innovation competition which we run in Finland every year. We call it This Works. And it's, uh, it's a competition to kids, uh, the ages ranging between 9 and 11 years. Now why is it called This Works? The task of the kids, they have a project at school, in different school lessons, the task of the project is to construct a moving toy. A moving toy not involving any electronics. A moving toy just coming about from different type of standard office equipment and, and material that we deliver to the schools. It's a group exercise, three or four kids per group. Boys and girls mixed in the, in the group. Of course they get very excited when, when they get uh, this kind of a task that they have uh, free hands in, in, uh, in developing a moving toy. Now, this, uh, here comes the educational part. When they start, the teacher will typically tell them that, yes, I know that you're quite excited about this, but you know, before you start, you need a plan. You need, you need to make a plan. What, what are you about to do? So, project plan is very important. So they work on, uh, work on this project, maybe once a week, twice a week, one hour a week. And uh, after every lesson where they have uh, made progress, and the teacher will ask before the end of the lesson, uh, tell them that now you have to write down what you did so that you remember the next time when, when we come back with this project. So reporting is very important. Then when you, uh, when the, when you approach the end of the project, there will be a question. Now, there is your toy coming about. Who would actually want to buy this and why? So, marketing plan is very important. And when they go into the uh, competition inside the school or a regional competition, or the national finals, where the best, uh, best groups will end up. Uh, there will be a task saying that now there is a jury coming to see your toy. There are many toys in display and the jury will only have a short time to look at your toy. So in a very short time you have to convince the jury that your toy is the best. So the elevator pitch. So actually we teach the kids quite a lot during this project, how innovation comes about and what are some important steps in, uh, in, in an innovation, innovation process. Second example, uh, we organize uh, different types of uh, technology days. This is uh, an example from last year, uh, from last, uh, last May, we called it the Millennium X. Uh, just to give you an example on the right hand side, you will see a, robot, uh, a contest uh, in robotics. Uh, kids at schools uh, in different parts of Finland, uh, they designed and constructed robots for a contest uh, in sumo. So there are two robots contesting against each other. First they have to find the sumo ring. That's uh, kind of the track that you, that you see in the picture. And then they, when they find the sumo ring, uh, of course, it's like the sumo rules. Uh, the robot that pushes the other one away from the ring is the winner. 
which of course gives rise to different algorithms how you construct your uh, robot and the movements so that it's, uh, it has a maximum chance of staying in the ring. Fin a final example, <coughs> we annually uh, organize an internship program which we call the, tech call the Techno Leap. Uh, the students here are something like 18, 19 year olds. They have just finished their school. And we target uh, to kids that have not yet decided what they will do after school. They, have not, they probably want to go to the university, but they have not yet decided where. And we want to give them a chance to work in a company or in another organization involved in, uh, in, in technology together with a mentor. We actually see both students and mentors in, in, uh, in, in this picture. So that they will actually have a practical example on, and practical examples on what an engineer actually does. Because uh, according to my own experience, and my, my own kids and, and uh, other kids that I know, they may have, when they are 18, 19, they may know what the medical doctor does. They may know what the lawyer does. But I think not even my kids have known what an engineer like myself has actually been doing. And this is a chance for them uh, uh, to learn, uh, learn about that in practice. And we also organize them different possibilities to, uh, to convey their experiences uh, to other kids through social media and, and visits at schools. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I would uh, like, to, uh, like to conclude. I thank you for your attention, and if there is time for any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.